David here with Fig Lou Don Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. In the fountain pen world, um, I appreciate things which are unique. Uh, sometimes unique is a good thing, and other times it leaves something to be desired. Well, today I have for you a unique pen from Caveco with a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B. And that would be the Caveco Supra. And the specific model is called the Fire Blue. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this modular offering, uh, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Smurti Pens for providing this pen for review. Uh, here's a look at Akila Sheth, the woman who runs Smurti. Uh, here she is at the recent Atlanta show with her husband, Nermal. Uh, they're based out of Mount Juliet, Tennessee, which is just outside of Nashville. Uh, besides their online shop, uh, they do attend a number of pen shows, so if you are at a show and see their table, it's well worth paying a visit. Uh, the pen arrives in one of the Caveco 10s. I like these unique 10s. And then we have the pen. Uh, this is the Caveco Supra, and this specific finish is called Fire Blue. Uh, this pen is made from stainless steel, and the, one of the distinguishing features of this pen is the flame treatment. Uh, now, with this hand-torched treatment, every pen will be unique, uh, a unique mix of blues and purples and even browns. I'm fond of the look. There is a Lilliput with this very same treatment. Um, I've had my eye on that one for quite a while. Uh, this Supra is kind of like the big brother to the Lilliput. Uh, Lilliput XL, if you will. Okay, let's go ahead and discuss the other distinguishing feature, which is the modular aspect of this pen. And I feel that that would be best demonstrated over here at camera two. So here we have the Caveco Supra Fire Blue. Uh, you know what, before we uh, take a look at the uh, modular aspect of this, let's take a look at some of the parts and features of this pen. Uh, so we're at the top here, we have the Caveco logo that is laser engraved in here. Uh, we also have Caveco and it says uh, Supra in Germany. Uh, then there is a even transition from this portion of the barrel or the cap to this portion of the barrel. And then there is a step down transition into this back portion here. And then there are some posting threads and the end of the pen is rounded. So when you unscrew the cap, uh, you can post this very easily. I do like this rounded aspect of it. It really guides you on here in regard to posting it. And it posts very nicely. And you can see that it's a rather lengthy pen at this point in time when it is posted. Now, I will say that something I'm not particularly fond of is how the material is on one layer here or one level, and then it kind of the middle section here go, goes down and then back up again. I kind of wish if it was all the same level. But then once you've taken off the cap uh, that you can see here, we have a number six nib, which is really nice for a pocket pen or what could be a pocket pen. Uh, there is a rather short transition, or I mean, sorry, a rather short section. Um, I will say these threads are very sharp. So you want to avoid these threads, but with this short section, that is a little bit tough. Uh, and so you, uh, you do feel those from time to time. I didn't mention it, but I do like this treatment that is on here. I just think that it's a unique combination of blues and purples and browns and even a little bit of red in there. It's really nice. Um, okay, this is, uh, you know what, let's go ahead and get into the modular aspect of this particular pen. So there are three distinct sections here. Uh, well, we're not going to count the, the cap, but there is the section, a middle portion, and then a back to the barrel here. When you use it in this configuration, uh, it's a rather large pen. And as you saw when it was posted, it was fairly large. Uh, but then if you want to use this as more, and, and then actually in this particular configuration, you can use a converter. You can actually use a standard converter, uh, but I have one of the Caveco converters in here and it fits in here well. Uh, and, but then if you would like to use this in a different configuration, you can remove this middle section. I need to remove the 
converter here because you can convert this into a smaller pocket pen and that does get fairly small and on this particular one I would want to use it whoops um, I would want to use it posted just because it's a little too small to not use posted uh, and then you use it in this configuration when you use it in this configuration it needs to be a, uh, a cartridge that you have in there because the converter even the smaller uh, Caveco converter is not going to fit it actually plunges down on the uh, uh, on the converter or on the yeah on the uh, uh, converter if you actually uh, use it in here under this configuration so you got to use it with the cartridge um, but you can see here that it turns into a smaller pen now actually kind of wanted to show you the difference this is a Caveco Sport and a Lilliput and you can see here in this configuration um, you know what let's take a look at these posted since this is how you're mainly going to be using this pen. Get those going there. And so you can see that it's in this particular configuration, it's a little bit longer than both of those. Uh, and, but then if we put the middle section back on, which goes this let's see this way what am i doing here oh it goes on the back portion here excuse me there we go and you can see how when it's not posted then it's pretty much the same size as a Caveco Lilliput as well as the Sport uh, when it's not posted and then when it is posted it's significantly longer. Uh, in regard to a couple of other size comparisons this is what it looks like with the uh, AL uh, Sport or this is the uh, Art Sport or the Sport Art um, and then since we have things unposted or uh, that this is what it looks like with a Lamy All-Star uh, as well as a Twisby Eco. So in regard to the modular aspect of this pen, you know, I'm, it's one of those things that I'm glad that it does exist, but I'm not quite sure how useful it is. Um, that Because I think that you're going to, it's, while I like to have choices, I think that people are going to pretty much have one uh, setup or the other. They're going to use it in the shorter setup or the longer setup. Typically, I wouldn't think that people would be converting back and forth between the two. And in that case, then maybe you could have two different pens, one longer and one shorter, as opposed to having uh, one that converts back and forth between the two. So let's go ahead and get this converter back in here. So we can do ourselves a writing sample. So here we have the writing sample for the Caveco. And this is the Supra Fire Blue. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using uh, is one that I th uh, thought would be appropriate because it's kind of blue and has a different colorful aspects to it. And that is Diamine. Skull and Roses. This is what the ink looks like. You can see it's a kind of vibrant blue and then it has some darker blue shading to it uh, and a little bit of sheen to it. It's really nice. Uh, it's something along the lines of Venta Blue Blood. Uh, and then this is what it looks like with Private Reserve's big, uh, Black Magic Blue. This is what the larger 80 milliliter bottles look like. Uh, this was part of the Diamine's Rock and Roll series, which has a lot of inks that I care for. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample.
Um, I do feel like this is a, a Bach nib. I know that Caveco has kind of gone back and forth between using Bach and Yovo, but for a medium nib. Between the two, I personally prefer Yovo's a little bit better. Um, there is nothing necessarily wrong with this uh, Bach nib. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of this stainless steel nib. It is a bit on the firm side. Uh, and I find that compared to the Yovo, the ink flow isn't quite is great for a medium nib. Uh, I want to say it isn't as much. I'm not going to say as great. Uh, and then in regard to reverse writing. Yeah, I wouldn't say that reverse writing is the strength of this particular nib. And then in regard to some fast writing. The feet keeps up very well. So there we have the Caveco Supra Fire Blue. Um, I'll have a link in the notes below where you can check this out on the Smruti Pens website. Um, I think it's an interesting, intriguing offering. Um, I think that it, like I had mentioned before, could have been split into two different pens. Uh, and there are certain aspects I liked about it, but other aspects that I felt could use improvement. But overall, I really like this Fire Blue treatment. Uh, it has a nice weight to it. Um, it just has a nice heft, heft for a, a smaller pen and I kind of like heavier pens and so it uh, checks a lot or checks a, a lot of the right boxes as well. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.